Hi hello welcome to learn stroke ias classes by arjun now you're listening to the daily hindu news analysis with news leads with arjun r shanka today we're discussing the the day is 10th december 2022 and also 9th december news is clubbed together so the 10th and 9th news together is combined together and now let's check the important news leads of the day with topic explanations the first important news was collegium's final decisions alone need to be in public domain supreme court says so this is nothing but the supreme court has said that the final decisions of the top collegium need to be uh, published in the public domain because a final decision of the collegium would mean a resolution drawn and signed by all the collegium members after due deliberations among them and uh, the collegium as you know is composed of the chief justice of india and the next four senior most judges and in this regard uh, it it is discussing the article discusses about articles 124 clause 2 and 217 of the constitution so uh, uh, it it is also given what do you mean by article uh, 217 clause 1 and 2 clause 17 clause 2 it is nothing but uh, uh, appointment on conditions of the office of a judge of a high court is article uh, uh 217 217 uh, appointment of conditions of a judge in the high court because every judge of a high court shall be appointed by the president by the warrant under his hand and seal after the consultation with the chief justice of india and the, the, you should know from gs paper 2 polity prelims perspective you need to know what are the different aspect of 217 and you know that uh, uh, until he attains the age of 62 years a uh, judge may be by writing under his hand address to the president and resign from his office so what is the resignation process and a judge may be removed from his office by the president in the manner provided in the clause of article 124 so the office of a judge shall be vacated by his being appointed by the president to be a judge of the supreme court or by his being transferred so uh, this is no about article 217 in detail and what is article 124 Article one two four clause two is nothing but every judge of the Supreme Court shall be appointed by the President by warrant under his hand and seal after consultation with such of the judges of the Supreme Court and of high courts in the states as the President may deem necessary. So uh, a judge may be by writing under his hand address to the President can resign, and a judge may be removed from his office in the manner provided. so you the, please do understand about article 124 and 217 it talks about the high court and supreme court judges and this article also talks about because the article talks about only the final decisions need to be in public that is a very good thing because you know it, it talks about the importantly the article also talks about right to information act 2005 because uh, it is said that uh, the decisions of the multi member collegium before the required deliberative and consultation process are not are concluded you know are they should not be put in the public domain via publication of the supreme court verdict only final verdicts should be out and uh, the discussion consultation should not be uh, put in the public domain and uh, that uh, does not come within the ambit of rti so the decision at the multi member collegium before the required deliberative and consultative process to be uh, included in rti no they are not supported under the rti so you should know what you mean by the right to information act the right to information act as actually 2005 uh, mandates timely response to citizen request for government information so you can actually uh, ask for a government information and you get it in a timely manner so the right to information is to empower the citizens promote transparency and accountability in the working of the government to contain corruption and make our democracy work for the people because you get to know about the information uh, that you want and the act is a big step towards making the citizens informed about the government so the final decisions alone will be published and before that the consultation discussions should not be posted and you cannot claim an rti according to this so very important article read it from gs paper 2 polity and governance moving on to the next important one is rain lashes tamil nadu coast as mandas makes landfall so this brings us what is cyclone mandas and what is a cyclone and what is an uh, extra tropical cyclone is something that we have to discuss so you should know what do you mean by the uh, the cyclone mandas began landfall at the mamalapuram coast in chennai 
and cyclones are generally named by the world meteorological organization or wmo which maintains a list of rotating names on april 28 2020 the imd tweeted a list of names for future tropical cyclones that will develop over the north indian ocean so the indian meteorological department has said that mandis was na- was name submitted by wmo member uh, of the united arab emirates and is pronounced as mandos it means treasure box in arabic so cyclone mandos is an arabic it's come it's nominated by the uae and it means a treasure box in arabic so this brings us another important the, the article also talks about sdrf and ndrf which is national disaster response force so this article is very important from gs paper 1 cyclones geophysical phenomena and also gs paper 3 uh, disaster management and then the next question is cyclone a cyclone is a rotating low pressure weather system that has organized thunderstorms but no fronts so it's a general term for weather system in which winds rotate inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure the winds rotate inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure like uh, for large weather system the circulation patterns is in a counter clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere and clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere and uh, uh, there are tropical cyclones with a maximum sustained surface winds of less than 39 miles per hour are called tropical depressions and with those maximum sustained winds of 39 miles per hour or higher are called tropical storms so less than 39 is tropical depression more than 39 it is a tropical storm and when a storm's maximum sustained winds reach 74 miles they are called hurricanes or typhoons hurricanes uh, are very popular in the atlantic ocean or caribbean or sea and typhoons form over the western pacific ocean so this is regarding the cyclone and what do you mean by extra tropical cyclones the extra tropical cyclones are low pressure systems that form outside of the tropics in response to a chronic instability of westerly winds so it is a low pressure system that form outside of the tropics in response to an instability of westerly winds so you should know what you mean by westerly so re- learn all these concepts in gs paper 1 geography perspective a lot of basic principles so it also contains uh, another important areas like uh, extra tropical uh, cyclone you need to know what is the difference between extra tropical cyclone and what is the difference between uh, uh, the normal cyclone and also know about the cyclone mandus moving on to the next important news is the rld chief questions delay in up government in providing aid to lakhimpur kheri okay so this you need to know from uh, uh, you need to know from gs paper 2 law perspective what is the lakhimpur kheri case nothing but on october 21 four agitating farmers in uttar pradesh lakhimpur kheri were crushed to death by a car in which a unions minister san was allegedly present so months later the government made promises to agitating farmer unions based on which they called off nationwide uh, demonstration against india's contentious repealed farm laws so the in, the whole incident uh, snowballed into a big controversy so this is basically lakhimpur kheri case know it from gs paper 2 law hot test of scramjet engine conducted successfully so this brings us what do you mean by a scramjet gs paper 3 space and what is a ramjet and a scramjet engine because isro's uh, the the engine's 11 long hot test was conducted successfully in the uh, mahendragiri in tirunelveli district of tamil nadu so what is a scramjet so what you should know that a scramjet uh, can operate efficiently at hypersonic speeds it allows high uh, supersonic combustion by breathing oxygen from the atmosphere during flight so uh, it is actually the the uh, scramjet is actually breathing oxygen from the atmosphere in during flight then it allows the oxygen to mix with hydrogen already stored in the vehicle to trigger combustion so if the engine in the launch vehicle can breathe oxygen from the atmosphere that will reduce nearly 70% of the propellant that has to be carried in the vehicle so that scramjet has got that ability to uh, breathe uh, oxygen from the uh, atmosphere while what is ramjet ramjet is a variant of an air breathing jet engine that does not include a rotary compressor it uses the engine's forward motion to compress the incoming air so a ramjet cannot function at zero air speed and therefore cannot be used to power an aircraft in all phases of flight 
so that is very important uh, ramjet has a difficulty it cannot uh, you power an aircraft in all phases of the flight so uh, that is a difference between ramjet and scramjet so no an idea from gs paper 3 space vikram sarabhai space center gets new trisonic wind tunnel so this brings us again gs paper 3 space you need to know what is a trisonic wind tunnel a trisonic wind tunnel is named because it is capable of testing in three speed regimes subsonic transonic and supersonic it is capable of actually uh, testing in three different uh, regimes actually so this is also very important in this regard and uh, the new trisonic wind tunnel will come up in the vikram sarabhai space center and uh, this is very popularly involved in this so know about what you mean by trisonic wind tunnel or twt moving on to the next important the three himalayan medicine plants enter iuc and red list so you need to know i'll give you a mains question here the iuc and red list needs to be a, a barometer of life the iuc and red list needs to be a barometer of life analyze the statements in the light of the complete conservation efforts and what is the international union for conservation of nature's red list of threatened species and uh, you should know that uh, uh, there are different type of uh, the three medicinal plants found in the himalayas have made it and uh, one of them is called as the mesotropis pellita it is actually one of them is the mesotropic pellita it's called as the patwa and uh, second one is uh, fritillaria cirrosa it's very difficult you know reading all this mesotropis pellita fritillaria cirrosa and uh, the hatigera that's a three important species so the uh, the mesotropis pellita is known as patwa is a perennial shrub that is found in uttarakhand it is critically endangered and the uses of uh, mesotropis pellita or patwa as the oil extracted from the leaves possess strong antioxidants can be used for synthetic antioxidants in pharmaceutical industry next is the uh, the himalayan fritillary or fritillaria cirrosa it's the himalayan fritillary it's also a perennial bulbous herb and uh, then china it is used for the treatment of bronchial disorders and pneumonia so it is also a strong cough suppressant and the third one is uh, the uh, salam panja the it's it's more popular known as the salam panja it is uh, basically facing habitat loss livestock grazing deforestation etc it is extensively used in ayurveda siddha unani and other system of medicine to cure dysentery gastritis chronic fever etc and it also talks about nothing but you can see in this picture it is actually written the mesotropis pellita and uh, yes you can see the hatagera which is also the salam panja and what is the iucn red list established in 1964 the iucn red list of threatened species has evolved to become the world's most comprehensive information source on the global extinction so an iucn red list is a critical indicator of the health of the world's biodiversity so know about iucn and this mains question for gs paper 3 environment moving on to the next one the karnataka high court shocked by agreement for adoption of unborn child gs paper 1 society and law this is nothing but uh, the the high court the, the uh, high court has expressed a shock over an agreement for adoption entered into two couples with respect to an unborn child the high court of karnataka said that such an agreement is unknown to law while stating that this is a case of adoption of money so it is nothing but uh, an agreement is no unknown to law because uh, according to the agreement even in mohammedan law it is invalid even under the mohammedan uh, law the principle of uh, does not recognize adoption as an agreement so adoption should not be an agreement uh, between the biological parents uh, so what happened is the court said that even the unborn child has article 21 or right to life so there is article 21 involved in this even the small unborn child has article 21 of the constitution right and uh, the agreement of adoption was signed in 2020 for the reason that the biological parents were unable to look after the child due to poverty so the child was born on 2020 and the child was brought up by the adoptive parents who were childless the adoptive parents moved the district court seeking custody of the child and to declare them as the guardian of the child and even the biological parents supported that let the you know uh, parents 
adoptive parents be but the district child protection unit udupi in karnataka registered a criminal case against both adoptive and uh, the uh, adoptive and the biological parents saying that you cannot create an agreement because uh, you cannot create an uh, adoption is not an agreement of money should not be happening for money so this is an important news related from the uh, polity uh, society law etc next is the important concept of the uh, anchoring prices it is nothing but uh, it says about uh, uh, the reserve bank of india's latest policy statement uh, re- regarding the price stability and it says that the monetary policy committee's decision to raise the benchmark repo rate by 35 basis points to 6.25% 25% and the retail inflation is remaining above the 6% of the tolerance mark and this is nothing but uh, the article talks about what is a monetary policy committee gs paper 3 economy and what is the benchmark interest rate there is something else what is benchmark interest rate and what are mibor and mibit so it's a lot of things so monetary policy is nothing but uh, uh, it is a committee constituted by the central government by notification in the official gazette so the first M- monetary policy committee was constituted in 29th september 2016 so the who are the members the uh, governor of the reserve bank of india is the chairperson ex officio the deputy governor of the rbi is in charge of monetary policy ex officio member and one officer of the reserve bank of india to be nominated by the central board is the ex officio member and other members will hold office for a period of 4 years or until further orders so this is what you call as the uh, other important thing you have the chairman chairperson the governor and the mpc the monetary policy committee determines the policy repo rate to achieve the inflation target so uh, that is very important regarding and what is the benchmark interest rate so benchmark interest rate is an interest rate that determines other interest rates there are different interest rates and benchmark used for setting other interest rate they determine the yield return and payoff to other contracts so such benchmark reference rate is an interest rate that determines other interest rates and you should you must have heard about what is mibor and mibid mibor and mibid are the interest rate benchmarks in india so uh, you should know that the mibor is mumbai interbank offer rate and mibid is mumbai interbank bid rate they are the two interest rate benchmarks in the indian market and uh, you should know that uh, both of them are interest rate benchmarks and uh, mibor is the indian equivalent of libor and mibor is a loan interest rate it is a rate at which lender would like to charge mibor is lender would like to charge and mibit is the interest rate that a borrower like to pay while getting a loan so mibor is the rate at which a lender would like to charge and mibit is the interest rate that a borrower like to pay while getting a loan so lot of important concepts mibor mibit benchmark and monetary policy and next is expand the food safety net without any more delay this is nothing but i'm going to give you another mains question what is pds system and the pds coverage what are some of the major rod blocks hampering the vision of national food security act so this is again a question from gs paper 2 uh, and also gs paper 3 also you need to know what is the national food security act and what is pds system and what is pds coverage so it simply says that uh, uh, you should know that the, the main aspect regarding this is uh, the what is pds coverage the pds coverage is determined by the nfsa act and uh, it also says that uh, 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 the who are the beneficiaries of national food security act and it, it should be noted that uh, uh you should know that there is a population census of 2011 uh, 2011 it's actually 2011 and more and more needy people should be brought under the national food security act so the point is basically there are a lot of people who are outside the uh census because who are not calculated but who are beneficiary people so only people under the census who are already there gets the benefit of this national food security act and there are so many people who are not enumerated according to the census but they are not getting the national food security act and the pds system is not accessible to them so we need to have a proper system for those people so that is why expand the food safety net 
without any delay so uh, it should not be and the uh, it says that the national food security act should not be restricted as per the census of 2011 and more needy persons should get the benefits of national food security act so read it from the perspective it's a very important article regarding gs paper 3 food security next is regarding the g20 can be the un security council alternate that is a good suggestion that has said and gs paper to international relations i'll give you an important uh, analysis regarding this a main question an honest broker in international peace and security is a role that that is not new to india discuss an honest broker in international peace and security is a role that is not new to india discuss so the article discusses about what is g20 and what is the un security council and its membership and what is bali declaration and who is a sherpa in a diplomatic meeting in g7 and g20 who is a sherpa meeting so let's quickly understand uh, a sherpa in a diplomatic meeting uh, should be dif- you know seen from a different concept because uh, uh, the sherpas should be uh, sherpas are the personal representative of a head of a state or a head of a government who prepares an international summit such as the g7 and g20 so sherpa is the personal representative of a head or a head of a government so between the g7 summits there are multiple sherpa conferences where different concepts are discussed so different sherpas con- different sherpa conference happens and you discuss multiple points and this reduces the amount of time and resources required at the negotiation of the head of the states so after a multiple sherpa dialogues and discussion finally you know when the uh, the main summit happens the head of the uh, sub, head of the country or head of the uh, nation summit happens a lot they come to the final discussions because preliminary round of discussions are already finished in the sherpa level of diplomatic sessions so that is what is called as a sherpa session and uh, what do you mean by the uh, the bali the bali resolution or the bali uh, it is also very important the bali declaration was adopted in the world parliamentary forum on sustainable development in indonesia so uh, uh, the bali declaration is something a gradual transformation of g20 from an economic body to a political body can be initiated can be seen in the bali declaration so bali declaration is a very important uh, thing that you have to know it was adopted in indonesia and uh, the declaration asked to call all parties to contribute to the restoration of stability and security uh, without using uh, you know having a self restraint from using violent means so bali declaration changed the way everything functioned so it's very important and uh, know about the uh, bali declaration and unsc membership so this is international relations very important article next is an important article regarding the uh, gs uh, gs paper 1 and 2 society and law raise age bar of marriage of muslim women the supreme court has asked the national commission of women to raise the minimum age of marriage for muslim women because the legal age of marriage is 18 years for women and 21 years for men so the marriageable age of a muslim woman is considered to be over 15 years under the personal law but the problem is the petition has sought the age of marriage of muslim women to be brought in consonance with the statutory law the national commission of women said that allowing the practice of uh, you know marrying marrying a muslim women at uh, just 15 or 16 years would expose muslim women to abuse and harassment and according to the posco posco do not the posco law do not permit marriage below the age of 18 so that is also to be noted from the gs paper 1 and 2 society and law perspective next is regarding the bill regarding the uh, setting up of commission to curb medical cost so this is a very interesting topic and there is an important topic discussed regarding gs paper 2 health and polity what is medical inflation how is it affecting the healthcare system in india and what do you mean by medical inflation is a very good topic that you need to know so nothing but uh, as a uh, india is witnessing a rapid increase in the cost of medical treatment a bill to provide for the establishment of national commission of controlling medical inflation is a good step to regulate and standardize rising cost of medicines so uh, medical inflation is definitely a reality so you should know what do you mean by medical inflation it describes a scenario in which healthcare services average and per unit cost increase over a time 
This is because the cost of medical care, supplies and medication is rising faster than the price of goods and services. So that is medical inflation and that is affecting the uh, states on a big time basis. Next is regarding the uh, center introduces bills to modify a uh, scheduled tribe list in four states. So this is GS paper to polity and governance. You need to know the government has introduced a bill that is modifying the scheduled tribes in the four states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Himachal Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And the amendments are proposed in the constitution scheduled tribes order 1950. So what is constitution scheduled tribes order 1950? Yesterday's news, we discussed the constitution scheduled caste order in 1950. So in, while dealing with the Dalit conversion, conversion cases. Moving on, the India-China trade deficit is at 51.5 billion. So this brings us the important concept of what do you mean by trade deficit? So trade deficit is set to take place when the imports done by a country exceed that of the exports done by a country in a physical year. So import you should know that the uh, import uh, done by a country exceeds that of the so the imports done by a country exceeds that of the exports done by a country import exceeds that of the exports and the trade deficit is also called as the uh, the uh, negative balance of trade and it is a way of measuring the extent to which international trade is happening between the countries so um, the trade deficit can be calculated for different types such as uh, current account, financial account and capital account. So there is in, this is the negative balance of trade, the trade deficit and China has touched 51.5 billion recently. So know it from the perspective of GS paper 3 economy. Next is regarding the uh, center to promote traditional Indian games internationally. GS paper 1 and 2 culture and sports and law. So I'll give you another main question here. The rural sports of India offers a great lesson to the younger sports enthusiasts about sportsmanship and should be prevented from being endangered. The rural sports should be prevented from being endangered. What measures should be adopted to bolster it? So what measures should be adopted to bolster it? And uh, this is regarding the uh, Kalo India program. Also, there is something called as what is Kalo India program. You should know Kalo India program. Uh, and it also talks about uh, rural sports like uh, the Malakhamba, the Thangtha, yogas, the Yogasana, the Gatka and Kalpata. So all these are important uh, rural games and you should know what do you mean by the Kalo India uh, concept. The Kalo India program has been introduced to revive the sports culture in India at the grassroots level by building a strong framework for sports in our country. So uh, this is regarding the Kalo India. And don't take international report at face value. This is a GS paper. Uh, you should know this is GS paper to health related. You should know uh, the vice president says that do not take international reports at face value because they talk about the global hunger index of 2022. And India has been ranked as 107th in the hunger uh, index. And uh, you know, the go the global hunger index uh, the four measures are captured like undernourishment, uh, child stunting, child wasting, child mortality. So this is how you create a hundred point scale and lower the and you should know that uh, uh, the score a, a score between 20 to 34 is pegged in the serious category. And this is where India find itself with a score of 29.1. So higher a scale, uh, the high, in hundred uh, high uh, lower a score is better. So you should know that uh, India is in a serious category between 29.1. Uh, so this is a question by the vice president that you should not take uh, such reports at face value. Next is UGC to announce new framework for UG courses. This brings us GS paper to education. What is UGC and what do you mean by the CCFUGP or curriculum and credit framework for the undergraduate program? And what do you mean by national education policy 2021? So, uh, this is actually uh, through the curriculum and credit framework of the undergraduate program, the CCFUGP, the UGC aims to implement the recommendation of National Education Policy 2020 and it will replace the choice based credit system that predates the NEP. So, you should know all these concepts and the why. 
a new framework for UG courses is actually drawn in. So read it from GS Paper to Education perspective. Next is ILO declaration urges country to ensure labor protection. So every day we have an international labor organization program and ARPM, which is what is ARPM? We have already discussed in yesterday's newspaper. Uh, for last few days, we have been discussing about the ARPM and International Labour Organization. 67 journalists, media workers killed on the job this year. International relations, Russia's war in Ukraine, chaos in Haiti, rising violence in Mexico has contributed to a 30% spike in the number of journalists who have been killed. And next is regarding the fundraising via private bonds placement more than doubles. This is GS Paper 3 Economy. This brings us on another important area called what is private placement of bonds? What is private placement of bonds? So you should know that Indian companies fundraising through private placement of bonds more than doubled in number. So what do you mean by private placement of bonds? It is nothing but a private placement is a sale of bond to a pre-selected investor and institutions rather than one in the open market so rather than just giving it to one in the open market the sale of bond is done to the pre-selected investor and institutions rather than in the open market so unlike a public offering private placement is exempt from filing an offer document with the sebi and first it is very cost and time effective method of raising funds it can be structured to meet the needs of the entrepreneurs and the private placement has easier compliance formality and you should know that the recently the Indian companies almost uh, you know doubled the the placement of bonds. So basically understand the placement of bonds is giving the sale of bonds to pre-selected investors and institutions rather than one in an open market. Know it from GS paper 3 economy. Next is India not as decoupled still on a sticky path says economist. So uh, this basically brings us another important mains question. I'll give you a question. You should know what do you mean by decoupling? Also, although it appears that India is decoupled in the short term from the global economic recession, it is still on a relatively sticky path. So what do you mean by decoupling? This is something that we know. So you should know that uh, decoupling means decoupling occurs when the return of one asset class diverge from the expected or normal pattern of correlation i think that is confusing but I'll, I'll, I'll explain this decoupling takes place when different asset classes that typically rise and fall together start to move in opposite direction so decoupling takes place when different asset classes that typically rise and fall together start to move in opposite direction so let's take an example with oil and natural gas prices the oil and the asset classes means oil and natural gas prices typically they rise and fall together oil and natural gas but decoupling means if oil price move in one direction while natural gas moves in on the opposite direction so that is what is meant it uh, the decoupling occurs when different asset classes typically rise and fall together start to move in opposite direction so, so remember the oil and natural gas thing and I'll give you a main question. What is decoupling? India's sharp and surprising outperformance has led to a chorus of predictions that India and the developed markets are getting decoupled. Is it? Give your views. So what are your views on India? What are your views on decoupling? And what are your views on uh, India's decoupling? Is India de getting decoupled? A very, very important question regarding GS Paper 3 economy. So I think you understood what you mean by decoupling. And next is center seeks 3.26 lakh as additional grants in 23. So GS paper 2 and 3, polity and economy. This brings us to another important question. What are supplementary demand for grants? And article 115 pertains to supplementary additional or excessive grants. And article 116 of the constitution pertains to vote on account, votes on credit and exceptional grants. So what are supplementary demand or grants? So uh, basically you should know that it is needed when the, the supplementary demand or grant is needed when the amount authorized by the parliament through the appropriation act for a particular service in a year is found to be insufficient. See, imagine that you, you say that the, you earmark 100 crores for a project and you see that the expenditure that has happened is 180 crores. So that means 
you need an excess 80 crores of money so that excess 80 crores of money is given as passed through the supplementary demand or supplementary grant likewise you should read it from indian polity you should know that there is an additional grant excess grant vote of credit etc so article 115 and 116 is very important regarding this so uh, uh, th these are some of the important uh, main articles of uh, 10th December 2012. Uh, sorry, the 12th December 2022. Uh, and this, these are the important areas regarding uh, 10th December. And uh, just quickly moving on to the uh, 9th December 2022. Uh, there is one article regarding uh, a prop because many of the articles in uh, the 9th is mainly election news which occupied in the newspaper. So the probe firing of trans women teacher. So the National Commission of Women has said that issued a notice to the Chief Secretary of UP government seeking an independent inquiry into the incident of a trans women teacher being terminated by a school. So read more about what is a who is a trans woman, who is a trans man, and the role of transgenders, the problems faced by them. GS Paper One Society. Next is back to the past is editorial. This is a very important editorial in this regard because. Uh, the Reichsburg or the Reichsburger, uh, uh, sorry for mispronouncing it. It is a German word. I'm really sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Because recently there was an attempt in Germany to overthrow through a military coup, overthrow the government. And more than 25 people are arrested by the German authorities, which include a sitting judge, a former elite paratroop commander and a former police officer. They are trying to overthrow the German government and they are all part of a movement uh, called as the citizens of the Reich or the Reich Burger or the Reich Reich's Burger. I don't know how you pronounce it, but still, that is the word that you have to pronounce. It simply means citizens of the Reich, and uh, they they plan to, uh, you know, attack the Bundestag, the Bundestag, and bring down the government through a military coup. So this is GS paper to international relations. You should have an idea, and no proposal to present to introduce the National Judicial Appointment Commission. So you should know. What do you mean by National Judicial Appointment Commission, GS Paper 2? And the collegium system is then law until center brings new law, GS Paper 2 polity. The Supreme Court said that nobody was stopping the union government from bringing a new law for judicial appointments. Because until then, the collegium system is the final word. Yes, parliament has the power to enact laws, but uh, definitely the scheme of the constitution requires the court to be the final arbiter. And definitely until that, Collegium system is the law. And the process to appoint ad hoc judges must be less cumbersome, says senior uh, Supreme Court. And this brings us to an important article called as uh, the Article 224A of the Indian Constitution. Because the Supreme Court suggested a less cumbersome and out of the box thinking of uh, roping in senior lawyers to act as ad hoc judges. So you need a, Article 224A of the Constitution of India says appointment of additional and acting judges. So the article 224 says about additional and acting judges. So it says that uh, the president that the number of judges of the court should be the uh, the president may appoint duly qualified persons to be additional judges of the court for such period not exceeding two years as he may specify. So there is 224 article talks about the additional and acting judges and uh, uh, the Supreme Court says that uh, you need to have a much more easier way of appointing more number of ad hoc judges. So you need to know what you mean by ad hoc judge. Read Article 224 of the Constitution. And the Rajya Sabha clears wildlife uh, bill that promises better protection, GS Paper 3, Environment, because the Rajya Sabha passed the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill. So the bill uh, seeks to conserve and protect wildlife through better management of uh, protected areas, and rationalized schedules which list out species under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So better protection needs to be clear. And field trials of GN mustard, DMH11 showed high yield. So this is regarding GS Paper 3 Agriculture. It talks about what do you mean by what are the transgenic plants? Because transgenic plant is a modified organisms where genes are transferred from one organism to another through genetic engineering techniques. So it talks about the transgenic plant and the, the field trials of the transgenic mustard variety, the Dhara mustard hybrid 11 or the DMH 11 revealed to be higher yielding 
and did not deter the pollination of honey bees so they support that gm mustard dmh 11 is very good it is creating higher yields and is not compromising the uh, honey uh, the pollination of honey bees so the dmh 11 had recently approved by the genetic engineering appraisal committee or geac so the geac is an autonomous body of experts authorized by the environment ministry to appraise the safety of genetically modified seeds so you should notice what is gac and what is dmh 11 which say the, the the survey says that it is having a higher yield and it's safer you should know what you mean and there is a bill to amend energy conservation act introduced in uh, raj sabha with this gs paper 2 and 3 law and energy and uh, it is said that the uh, it is the minister stated that the non fossil fuel capacity was 42% of the total energy generation 42% of the total energy generation uh, is actually through this to address the transition to clean energy the bill is very important because for petroleum refining we use hydrogen drawn from natural gas so for petroleum refining we use hydrogen drawn from natural gas and we have to replace natural gas to stop carbon emission we should use green hydrogen gas so the bill uh, basically wants to create a code for non fossil fuel based construction so it is a very important regard to uh, regarding the uh, energy conservation so stop emission we need to use about the green hydrogen you should know what you mean by green hydrogen and next is international news uh, peru gets a new president after predecessors arrest uh, so <coughs> sorry uh, dina bulard the country's first women leader appeals to the opposition for a truce so you should know the new president uh, peru gets a new president and the sri lanka to resume negotiations on stalled trade agreement with india that brings us important area like what is ecta ecta means the economic and technological cooperation agreement economic economic and technological cooperation agreement what is sepa sepa is nothing but comprehensive economic partnership agreement and what is rcep the regional comprehensive economic partnership so you should know that the uh, 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 the ecta the sri lanka resumes talks with india on the uh, the stalled ecta which is actually stalled for a long time as colombo is looking for trade pacts and foreign direct investment to build rebuild the country so the ecta faced considerable resistance uh, from the sections of sri lanka mainly from the nationalist group and trade unions who saw that the ecta is giving unfair advantage to indians so it's a the ecta itself followed decade long but futile negotiations on another one called comprehensive economic partnership so uh, the uh, you should know what do you mean by rcep the ecta and sepa gs paper to international relations and next is uh, i'll give you a mains question in this regard health need to urgently fix basics of water education and health gs paper 2 and 3 education health economy agriculture health and education spending is very critical to prevent the demographic dividend from becoming a disaster very very important question health and education spending is very critical to prevent the demographic dividend from becoming a disaster so you should comment on that uh, this article talks about uh, india need to fix the fundamental gaps in areas like water health education and address the inconsistent policies of financial sector so if we don't fix water we can't double agriculture productivity and uh, the china india's water table had plummeted to a very dangerous level so the china started its growth after fixing the water facilities and water so india should also fix the areas of water health and education it's very important so read it from gs paper 2 and 3 education health and economy perspective so these are the important news leads of uh, Uh, two thousand twenty-two, so December tenth and December nine. So subscribe to Learn Stroke IS classes by Arjun and read more in the coming.